What do you think about nowadays there are new countries entering this uh, arena of Mars exploration? Well, I think it's a very good thing. Of course, China just launched its first Mars probe, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think that's great. First of all, this kind of activity is extremely inspirational, uh, especially to young people. It says to them, learn your science and you can be an explorer of new worlds. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to tremendously benefit uh, China. Um, in, in, in terms of recruitment of the best and the brightest who want to be part of this. Now, so that's good for China. Mm -hmm. Why is that good for the United States? Well, guess what? Inventions made anywhere sooner or later become available everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, the more creative players there are in the world, the more it benefits everyone. You know, right now, look, over the past 30 years, China has developed tremendously, and it has developed uh, largely by, uh, uh, through the use of technologies that were mostly developed in the West. But the West actually had its renaissance by uh, uh, adopting technologies like paper and printing that had been invented in China. So uh, if not for China, the West never would have developed. If not for the West, China wouldn't be developed now the way it is. You know, the more creative players there are in the world, um, the better for everyone. And what is the greatest threat facing humanity today? Is it resource exhaustion, overpopulation? Uh, no. What, what caused the great disasters of the 20th century were bad ideas. And in particular, one bad idea. And what that bad idea is, is that there isn't enough for everyone. And so we are going to have to fight each other over what is here. And if you come to the conclusion that sooner or later, you're going to have to fight it out with those other people over there for what's here, then it, by definition, it's going to be the advantage of one side or the other to fight sooner rather than later. So, for example... In the 1930s, why did Japan feel it had to invade China? They had already conquered Korea and Manchuria, which are much bigger than Japan. They had no need for additional land or anything of the kind. But they figured that sooner or later, they were going to have to fight it out to the Chinese for who was going to run Asia. And the time to attack is now while China is weak and divided. Okay, so here we are today. Uh, and you know, there are people in positions of leadership in both the United States and China who think that sooner or later we're going to have to see who's going to run the show and, um, and think of us as, as, as enemies. And if, if that kind of thinking prevails, then sooner or later there will be war and we'll destroy the world. Uh, we have a world today that is more prosperous and happy than any has ever existed in history. And yet they'll destroy it because they think that sooner or later we have to fight. Just like Europe in 1914 was more happy and prosperous than it had ever been before in history. And nevertheless, they sent it all up in smoke because of this crazy idea. Now, we go into space together, not necessarily in the same ship, but we're engaged in a joint enterprise and of opening up new worlds to humanity. And if you start looking at that, you start realizing that it's not true that there's only so much to go around because the earth comes with a wide open sky. And furthermore, that it's not true that different nations are in a struggle for existence, but rather we're different members of the same family, maybe a kind of disorderly family, but nevertheless family, which working together is vastly expanding the human prospect. And why fight over islands and provinces when there are whole planets that you can develop? So I think that this grand enterprise, the exploration and development of space, uh, it's the one that um, can bring humanity together through an understanding that in, in a very real sense, we're all on the same team. And, uh, and it's that understanding is what's going to save us.